Welcome you guys to another in the series of DIY gifts, where today we are going to be making a gorgeous vintage mini gallery for any of the ladies in your life, your mothers, your sisters, your besties, who yes. doesn't love photos and exactly. gallery. Let's get started. For today's project, we are going to use the following IOD products, our wood gallery blanks, which we absolutely love, are very, very high quality, super tight seams, and they also have a shadow box back, so you can use the front or the back, and we will be using both today. And we will be using these eight sizes, by eight, five by seven, and eight, eight by, by 10. 10. And we will be using our brand new Farmhand Alpha. You guys, we have come out with several new alphas so that you can do all of the custom order art you want. Anything that you see on Pinterest, you can emulate almost anything with our fonts. So yes. lots of new fonts. We will also be using our decor ink and our ink pad, our IOD air dry clay, which is the absolute best clay on the market. It holds its artist Ooh. quality. It holds all of that beautiful detail from our IOD molds, which, which ones are we using today? Today we are using our heirloom roses and our trimmings one. Awesome. So much detail. And so last fun. but not least, must not forget our gridded thin mount for arranging all of the alphabets we'll be using today. To get started, we are actually going to be creating these in tandem. So that way it really makes the process streamlined and you'll see how quick it is to get a little mini gallery done. The first thing we're going to be doing is placing our molds on the five by seven piece and the eight by 10 piece. So Josie's gonna do the trimmings and I will do the heirloom roses. Now, she does a little dusting of cornstarch and that really helps uh, release the clay from the mold very very easily so but you don't want to get too much it really is just the dusting and, mm -hmm. and in fact to ensure you don't have too much because what happens is you're filling the dimension in it if you have too much and then you reduce the dimension and detail of your casting so mm -hmm. whoever has baked a cake and grease and flour, their pan is the same thing. Just boop, boop, excess gone, you're good to go. <clears throat> now, don't forget when you're using the air dry clay to always keep it uh, contained, covered, so that it will, otherwise it'll lose its moisture. Yes, and it'll dry out. It dries out. Okay. And we are going to just cast away, cast away. I need a little more. Cast away. Cast away. Do you guys like my plaid? I'm obsessed with flannels this season. Are you guys obsessed with flannels? It's a really pretty color. I do like it. Yes, I can't. I don't know what it is about me. I've never done this before, but this year I can't stop wearing flannels. I'm all about it. You're here for it. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're casting, keep in mind that you want to keep a nice flat back. And I did not put enough clay in there. So I'm going to put a little bit more because I want a nice flat back. And that allows all of your glue to really adhere to the surface. So, yeah, if you have a convex back mm -hmm. that isn't flat then what you'll have is this part but not the edges you really want to yeah. suck those edges down it's and true. like sally said the way to do that is by having that flatness that is true so look at this the beauty so pretty i love this mold it is so romantic the cabbagey roses uh peanut it looks like those cupped peonies that are all ruffly. I love a ruffly garden rose. Mm, yes, fave. the heirloom. Yes, the heirloom Cabbage. Roses. Beautiful. And perfect. 
also did you mention our micro rim, our patented, patent pending micro rim that is makes life so much easier when you're casting. And you just run your thumb over and it gives you that nice clean edge. Everybody mm. loves our micro rim. Taking a little tip, when you are doing strips, like with our trimmings, castings, what you can do is use a straight edge to really shimmy it. And you'll wait till you get the glue on. But the idea is <clears throat> just to use that straight edge as a guide to, to gently nudge up to it. So when we, I'll go over that um, when we, when I glue this down. I really love making gallery art with IOD products. They're so fun to make and you can really personalize it. You could actually put the initial of, you know, somebody's monogram or what do you call that? Their initials when it's three. Is it just a monogram? Monogram, I okay. think. Okay. Yeah, to personalize it and make it really special. Okay. And then the stem in the heirloom roses, if you didn't know, you can actually curve this in any which way you want. So even though it shows straight in the mold, you can have a nice curved stem if you want. Here's where I really love the micro rim action is it gives you a high point which um, gives you that clean break so that even if you're using your thumb, you can see it um, creates an edge and kind of self trims, mm -hmm. which we like. We like it. We like We're it. here for it. We're here <laughs> for it. Okay, this is a fun tip for mitering. Okay, guys. In fact, let me get that little excess off of there. That way, I wasn't paying attention to my micro rim. There we go. So I want to do mitered corners on these. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to have your get all your sides done, and then you're going to overlap it like that. Okay, and then you're going to take a blade that will span from the cor outside corner to the inside corner, and you're just going to chop like that. Okay, and what that does is it gives you um, a miter that lines up properly, like that. I'm gonna do the same on this. And actually, a thin metal blade would be even better than than this spatula, but you can see there, that way you get, um, even if your angle is a tiny bit off, they're gonna match off because you're doing them at the same time. So, All right, I'm gonna start gluing my rose on here. All right. After you glue, I'll be ready to What glue. we like to use is Tight Bond Quick and Thick Multi-Surface Glue. We use this for, honestly, everything that we mold. Now, there may be some things that you if want you're to gluing, find the, like a different glue. Plastic to plastic or metal to metal or glass, non-porous surfaces, you want to um, double check your adhesives. Mm -hmm. But this ends up being Good for a go-to. Yeah. Faux show. Okay. And then you just want to really make sure that you have a nice even surface of glue. 
that it's all covered. It's okay if it seeps out the sides. You can just clean that up. And honestly, by the time everything's done, it ends up just working with the project. So, okay. Oops, you know what? I wanna do my stem first, I think. Or do I? No, I don't. I want to do the rows first. There we go. Okay, and then I'll do my stem up to it like so. Okay. You guys tell us in the comments who you would make this set for Ooh, yeah. and remember that this set is just a starting point you can customize this in any which way you can say anything on the word art piece and you can use any of the molds you can make it masculine if you want and that is why this is one of the most versatile gift ideas because you can truly just really have fun with it. Like if you have somebody who loves to read, you can have a reading quote. Um, you can just do so many fun and different things that are unique to the person you're making it for. see I'm shimming this a little gently because I'm wanting to kind of spread the glue underneath it and now if I want this to go out to that outer edge I can put my straight edge up against there and then and I can either use my hands or you could use another like straight tool if you didn't if you wanted to really get it just straight. You don't want to eliminate any sign of the handmadeness of it. Okay, my rose is all ready. So I'm going to set that aside. Let Josie finish hers. I'm just using this little thing to kind of squinch that edge just a smidge. Mm -hmm. so that it meets and then when it dries you will get a little bit of gap and a little bit of crack and you just fill it but this is going to minimize this mm -hmm. and in effect make them fit together so nicely yes and if you want to um see in detail all about how to use our molds so that you can learn more about what it looks like to backfill and what it looks like to let it dry all the way as opposed mm -hmm. to painting it wet all of those things we go over in our mold basics video yes so make sure to catch that yes yes and that will be on our youtube channel you can also find it on our website under products Okay, you good? We're good now. Okay, fabulous. So we've got it all glued on and we've already stepped this out. So we have the dry versions as well. And we are going to pull those back in. A note about different ways to do it is you can, if you, I don't wanna say best practice because there's just different ways of doing it, but to let it dry overnight mm -hmm. or however long it takes, depending on conditions before you paint, if you do that, it's easier to not knock down some of your details. Mm -hmm. However, I know sometimes I am not that hurry. patient. I'm in a hurry and I want to get to the fun parts. So as long as you use a soft brush 
and be mindful of your details mm -hmm. so you don't obliterate them. You can paint them while they're damp. And in fact, sometimes it kind of evens out the drying process so that your cracking is a little actually minimized. minimized. So yeah. there's that. So we have, actually this one is still wet, so you'll get to kind of see what that is like. And then this one is all nice and dry. And we are going to paint these all white at the same time. Yes. So again, when you're making your mini gallery, you can do it any color you want. For us, this seemed like the most streamlined way to do it. Yes, now because this is wet, I'm gonna use a super soft brush mm -hmm. because the stiffer the brush, the more difficult it will be for me to really leave those details intact. One tip again when you're painting your castings, actually whether they're still wet or whether they're dry is not to put a whole bunch of paint on a spot necessarily, but rather like I, I get some paint, I offload it there and then I go back in here because again, anytime you have medium excessively, it will fill the lows and the dimension is a combination of your highs and lows. If you minimize either of those, you minimize your dimension. So we don't want to fill our lows or knock down our highs. I have to admit, it is really nice when the casting is dried. It's, yeah. 90% of the time I'm painting them wet, but I'm really enjoying not worrying about this detail as I paint. Mm -hmm. I can be as rough as I want and really get in there to those cracks and crevices. Exactly. Whereas I'm being super careful with this soft little brush and getting kind of massaging it in here so that I don't, but I, I need to be more mindful than if it was dry. Now, some of you might notice, so I wanted to point out that the casting arrangement is a little different on this finished dried piece. Either one will work, so don't freak out if you did it the initial way, and now you see that it's different. You just arrange it however you want. Josie's using the sloppy drippings off of my paint to paint her piece. That's what sisters are for. You can have my sloppy drippings. <laughs> my sloppy paint drippings. I'm not the neatest crafter. Ask my husband. I'm not either. He is But you do learn to pay lamenting. attention to the things that like actually affect your desired outcome. Maybe. Or maybe you don't. <laughs> you just keep going. Well, and our personalities, like I'm actually when it comes, I'm yeah, not we're, we're as, different. But when we're crafting, I tend to get, and especially when we're crafting on camera, super controlling. <laughs> like I want to teach the best way to do it. You no, know, she's very, and she's like whatever particular, <laughs> and we're so the opposite in real life, which is so funny. But yeah, I'm a little more willy nilly, shall we say? Okay, we have our castings all dried, our paint coat is on, we're going to get started by glazing the molded pieces. Josie, do you want to do that? Yes. Okay, so I tested my glaze mix, my wash, my color wash wick, mm -hmm. and it was too heavy, too um, dark. So we went back in and we diluted it down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I would say this is probably, I don't know, eight parts water to one part wow possibly <laughs> that's a lot okay yeah totally Eight it's to one. very watery very, it's a dark color that's very sheer so oh that's perfect yeah so i'm gonna okay. go on really loose and then i'm gonna go back and gently gently because remember this is still so pretty this is my favorite raw part. just take a moment to appreciate this and that detail it is it's gorgeous it's so pretty gonna go on loose and generous and then with my damp 
shop towel gently remove. Make sure you guys check out our blog post with this because we have written instructions and we also have links to all of the different mm. things like shop towels and wood glue so that you don't have to hunt around to find it. Yes. That is so pretty. It is. And this is another reason that if you know that you're going to use a glaze, um, you might want to allow your castings to dry thoroughly before you paint them mm -hmm. and then let your paint dry thoroughly too because it's raw um you want to make sure you're not going to be overworking it and taking it back i should be using a smaller brush here but that's all right for the inside <laughs> it mm. really shifts the color too with whatever type of glaze you use you can also use colors. Color glazes are fun. We've done blues and different yes. tinted glazes. There's really no limits. Okay, I'm going to leave um, that built up in the crevices because I really like that. And I've just wiped the mm. sides and it really picks up the brush stroke and chalk type paint, mineral paints are very thick. So one of the things that you get is a lot of character in the brush strokes. And so when you glaze it, it really pops that brush stroke too, mm. which yes. is nice. Okay. We've got that, that done. Super easy peasy, ham and cheesy. <laughs> Cheesy's right. <laughs> Let's let these dry. So do you like right. how I did that? Like left it kind of dark and texture in there? I super do. Awesome. Yes, I super, super do. do. I have, hold on, let me clean my hands off really good because this is all beautiful and white. Now, Gorgeous. It is going to be beautiful. Do we want to leave it white or do we want to glaze it? Um, let's, let's leave it white. Yeah. Let's leave it white. <clears throat> I like that okay. idea. I am concerned about my messy space. Sloppy is good, but not if it ruins your project. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, see? Yeah. Okay. So we are going to use, like I said, the farmhand font love it it's so fun and whimsical and simple and works for so many different things and i am going to say this is us so i'm going to go ahead and the first thing i'm going to do is condition the stamp if you want to know in detail how to use our stamps check out the basics stamps video on our website but it's one like a thing yeah one thing you want to do is anytime you open your new set just one time before you get started do a light sanding with a fine grit sandpaper one direction and then the other and why do we do that joe that gives it a micro texture or a tooth so that your no matter what kind of medium you're using on it it helps stabilize it mm -hmm. we don't have any are the quality of our stamps is top notch and we don't use any sort of um silicone release um coatings or anything like that so it's not about cleaning them it's about giving it that micro texture an example of a medium that really wants to move and beat up is pottery glaze so I was stamping on um, first fired pottery and I wasn't getting as clean of an impression because it would beat up. Mm -hmm. After I conditioned it, I got a totally really nice clean story. because pottery glaze has a lot of water mm -hmm. and it tends to want to bead. So anytime you're using something like watercolors or things that have a lot of water that want to beat up, the conditioning is really going to help. As well as um, even just our decor inks, having that micro texture. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first thing I'll do is I will pull off all my letters and arrange them. Okay. You always
always want your backs to be clean and dry and your mount to be clean and dry. That's what helps them stick together. So if ever they start to lose their sticky, no worries. Just give them a, a washing with warm to the touch. You don't want any type of high, high heat with your stance. So warm water, just dish soap. These are gonna be, oh no, 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 this is on the top, right? And then is us is down there, right? right. Okay, that nice. is right. So it's flush left. Oh, okay. And then is will be in there. So I just need the U. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then isn't is going here? This. Oh, is right, 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 right. Okay. So okay. what you can do is, and this is a tip for spacing. You've already had that laid out, so you could mm -hmm. take those and move them here. Do your spacing this way. And there you go. And then you'll go back in and fill those. Perfect. So, so like Josie was saying, what you want to do is check your, use the lines that you paid attention to, and you can see right how to pick it up. And you have that nice <laughs> and ready and down. Mm. And then you just pick up your letters and you can see this is nice and center here. We love our grids. Such a great guide. It just keeps mm -hmm. you true. It keeps you perpendicular. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we are going to use, I'm going to give this a fresher. Has this had a fresher? Oh, never mind then. It's been refreshed already. And I'm going to go ahead and this is our black decor ink. We like to, to take the pad to the stamp and not mm -hmm. the other way around. Correct. And have your stamps on a flat surface. So this is nice and flat. Mm -hmm. It's secure, it's not going anywhere. And then you can take that flat surface of the pad and go right to those surfaces. You don't wanna press mm -hmm. hard because you just want those surfaces. That's right. Okay. And then again, I am going to use, was I over here? Yeah. Yep. Okay. My lines to keep me true. Hover and then commit. Hover, once you're down, commit. Do not shift. Do not shift. And then just gentle, even pressure. No slidey. No slidey, just kind of rub all around. I like to take my time once it's down and I'm committed. Take a deep breath and take your time. One of the, I would say the biggest factors of getting, um, being successful with our stamps is really the amount of medium that you use. And depending on the medium and the surface that you're going on to, that's going to be different. So really playing with the stamps is very, very important. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, Before just, you know it, you'll be like, I got this. It's easy, but takes a little bit of practice. That's right. Okay, I think we were good there. So I'm going to make sure I lift straight up. Mm, and beautiful. I like that, that is beautiful. And then, I'm going to clean my stamps so that when I go back down, and I'm just using wipes to clean them off in between. Once you're done with the stamps, you can wash them with, again, warm to the touch, soapy water, and then put them back on the backing. Mm -hmm. But in between, I just use a wipey. Then dry it off, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're going to place again. Actually, yeah, that's even placement, huh? Mm -hmm. Looks very nice. Again, yeah, a little bit above. I like it. Okay. Take these off. Okay. Let's center our lines again. Remember, don't get too overthinky about the grid. The grid is just a visual guide. That's true. So it helps you stay like, you'll see like if you're like this on the edge of your 
project or the lines of your furniture, you'll be oh, true it up. Yeah. Once you start using it, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. It's very similar, like, you know how we innovated um, the, our transfers and we have the patent pending grid on our transfer carrier sheet. That's the same concept. It helps you also though for trimming, but it helps keep you true to your project so that if you want to make sure that you're like not cattywampus. Worth I noting it. is how nicely inks and paints engage with the surface when it's unsealed. Yes. It really does make a difference. So our preference is when you can, and it's sometimes there's a project sequence for other moving parts that you can't, but when you can, stamping onto the unsealed chalk type paint mm -hmm really gives you um, a nice impression. It grabs it, it dries quickly, which is awesome when you're masking too. That is very true. Okay, so for this one, I am just going to not put it on the backing. I'm going to leave it off and ink it up and put it down. Because She's it's a running single, with scissors. I'm running with scissors here. <laughs> it is a single letter and I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm just gonna get it done, okay? and keep in mind and sally does it this way um that it'll want to cling to your finger so notice how oh, she's right. doing it she's not she's being careful so that she lifts her finger and it doesn't lift it and fall back down right and if you find that you just don't like using that method that's okay yeah josie doesn't like that <laughs> method at all but I do it all the time. I'm used to it. It is a time saver when you've got one or two letters to yeah. do. Looks fabulous. I love it. Love it. It is so quick and easy to it do is. these little sayings, guys. If you don't want to do a mini gallery for somebody, just do one of these. Mm -hmm. Put some paint on there. Put a saying that is meaningful to them and you. And You know what else would be awesome? If you're using the front side, and like you could adapt it for the back as well, mm -hmm. but putting on the back, there's a perfect spot for putting a personalized little note for like if yeah. it's a gift commemorating, you know, whether it's Christmas or a birthday or whatever. That is true. Um, that's a great little, little hidden spot to put a love note. I love that. So fun little finish right here or almost finish we are using these command strip here we go little cute little darling clips and we're going to adhere it into the shadow box frame so that you can change out your picture yes. we painted it with the stinky gold yes we so use that... the stinky gold to paint it gold and it is ready to adhere. So when you adhere it, take a keep in mind where where you want your photo to fall, right? Mm -hmm. So like that looks like perfect, huh? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you'll do is just lift that off. Oh wait, the black part goes. I think that, on the back, right? Yeah. No, you so but this. yeah, the black part yeah. goes on the wall. Yeah. Or the okay. Wood. So I'm gonna have it in front of me so that I can center it right now. I'm just gonna eyeball it. You could totally not do that but again i'm a messy maker the messy maker and yeah i want it up here about thereabouts and oops just eyeball this is that about right stop ouchie okay all right just like so and then i'm going to remove this part mm -hmm. so that I can place my clip on it. Is that still centered? Okay, I think it is. Perfect. And really push it down. Yeah, you have to hold it down for just a wee bit. Now you can use glue if you want to put it down. But those are um, super they're kind convenient. Of, kind of handy. Easy button. Now they are meant to be like you can remove them if you want to, but you can just 
cut that off if you want. Cut the little tab mm -hmm. that hangs. You could also use a binder clip if you wanted. True. Any which way, but I love- These are so beautiful. An interchangeable frame. It's one of my favorite things. I'm kind of weird that way, but I love just having an interchangeable frame. I love it. Now, we Last are going step. to finish this up with a clear wax to seal everything. And we did put this on first because it would have been more difficult to adhere after it was waxed. So, ah, here we so go. We can do this, mm -hmm. this, and jump down. Oh, just a light. I'll let you do that one. Okay. Yeah, there go on light. It tends to be um, overdone. Mm -hmm. It's easy to do more wax than you need. Offload a little. And you can get all of these supplies through your stockist. And you can get that on our store locator and our list of online stores. So everything you need to make these, our stockists are standing by. It sounds like a <laughs> telethon. They're home standing shopping. by home shopping right now. They are ready for you to serve you and show you how to use it. They're constantly educating themselves on the product use and going directly to the source, and um, which is us, and <laughs> and getting the you know the best practices for using IOD products and exactly. how they were designed to be used. And they have your back. They will, you can be mid project and be like, you made a mistake yeah. or something's going not right or totally. You and can that's be flustered and our... you can call them and they will yeah. help you walk you through it. And that's why we sell our products only through authorized stockists. Yes, exactly. Products we support. intend them to be your partner in your creative journey, to be yes. there for you, to hold your hand when you need it. Yep. Mm, so pretty. That is pretty. And let's get a finished look at this after I get mine done. Oh yeah, clip that in there. This could be like a recipe board mm. and or notes, to-do list, grocery list. You could put anything on that little clip. That's so true. Do you know, I print recipes out because something yeah. about once in a while, if I'm in a rush and it's a simple recipe, I might look at it on my phone. Mm -hmm. But having like your recipes on the little cards and then clipping it on that mm -hmm. is super cute in between too. And have this like, so you don't have to have a stand. Right. So this goes, there's a spot on my counter. That'd be fun. Okay, let's check it out. Check it out. Ooh. That is really pretty. I love it. You could arrange this so many different it. ways. I love that the wood blanks, we actually designed them and created them to create galleries. So they're all different sizes and can be portrait Mixy, or matchy, horizontal, mix and match, use the front, use the back. Oh, that's messy. You are messy. You totally are messy. I, I never said I wasn't messy. <laughs> I'm just intentional anyway, about my messiness. We are so happy with the way this came out. I hope you guys got some great ideas. You could do one of these for a gift or you could do the whole mini gallery. Mm. Wouldn't it be fun for you to build somebody's gallery? Like this is for your birthday. This is for Christmas. And you'll have a full gallery by the time you're 50. No, exactly. <laughs> anyway, we're almost 50, so. Anyway, love this, you guys. Anyway, Super fun. This is nucleus. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can continue getting our videos as soon as they come out fresh. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Mwah. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah, you have to dig it out, and then once you're digging it out, you're smelling it.
and eat. If it smells like root beer, you're tasting it. <laughs> I'm gonna use that clip out of context.